Estate tax laws change frequently. In fact, they could be changing again at the end of this year. And this is something that you really have to consult an expert about. And luckily, we just happen to have one here with us today. Joining us now from the J.L. Williamson Law Group in Statesboro, Jeffrey Williamson. Good morning. Good morning to you. And we want to caution everybody. This is very, uh, it, it's confusing and it's very complicated. So we're going to touch on it here, but they really do need to do research and look into it further. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Unless you've got three hours. Three hours. That's right. <laughs> we, we were talking a little bit before we came on about uh, what will be changing this right. year. Well, as you may know, we've got a presidential election underway. Maybe you've heard. Um, <laughs> at the end of this year, a lot of the Bush, what people call the quote-unquote Bush tax cuts will expire. Um, the top marginal rate is set to go for income tax from 35 to 39.6 percent. And uh, But what I'm here, here today is to really talk about the estate tax. This year, the current exemption is $5,120,000. That's pretty generous, most generous it's ever been. That's per person. So a married couple can yeah. leave over $10 million. Mm -hmm. But next year, the exemption, if the law remains unchanged, uh, will go to only a $1 million. And the top rate will be 55%. Uh, so just about, you know, if you have an estate, just say $1.5 million, you're talking about you know, tens of thousands of dollars in estate tax that you might would owe. Now, there's nothing, no bills in Congress yet, but President Obama has proposed in what they call the Green Book. That's just something for, you know, budget proposals um, to take the exemption to what it was in 2009, which was three and a half million with a top rate of 45 percent. But this is important to note, and it's kind of technical. This year, the exemption is, is unified, meaning you can either gift away five million or you can bequeath, leaving your will five million. Under Obama's proposal, it would be bifurcated again, as I understand it. it would, the gift exemption would only be a, a million, but you, you, the estate exemption would be three and a half. It would be bifurcated once again, not unified. And, I mean, people hear the top limits, five million, ten million, and say, well, this doesn't apply to me. But really, everybody has to plan for this. Well, that's a very good question. What's in your, quote, unquote, your federal gross estate is not necessarily just your probate estate. For example, if you have life insurance and you own that life insurance, that's in your federal estate. So some people just have, you know, not, not uncommon to have a million dollar life insurance policy. Well, that's includable unless you put it in a trust or do some kind of planning. So that could be a big hit. Uh, and, and you don't know what the exemption, you know, people don't understand too, your assets don't come in at their historical cost, they come in at fair market value. You know, that farm that you had way out in Pooler or States where wherever that was, you know your grandma bought for a dollar an acre yeah. might well be worth a whole lot more than you think. So the other thing is to to not just do it once and forget about it. Oh, I took care of my estate. You have to kind of stay fluid with it and and that's, keep checking and changing. That's a very good point. I tell my clients, you know, depending on their level of wealth, but you need to review your estate plan. I mean your total estate plan, not just your will or your trust, but your health care directives, durable powers of attorney, every three to five years, unless you have a major change. If you get married, you probably need to review them pretty soon. Or if you get divorced, there was a famous Supreme Court case where uh, this fellow got divorced and he still had his ex-wife as a designated beneficiary on his retirement plan. And she wound up with it. <laughs> yeah. That was a mistake. Yeah, that was a mistake. So every three to five years is a good general rule. Wow. And we talked about this a little bit. What makes this so intricate is the uncertainty. I mean, nobody knows when they're going to need to plant their, their state. <laughs> that's right. What nobody, the laws will be at that time. That's right. Uh, I've done, you can do some things uh, to try to plan around it, what is called disclaimer planning. But uh, it's just hard to know exactly what the law will be. You know, Noah's, people come to my office, I tell you, know, Noah's state plan is forever. I wish I could draft you one trust or one will that would serve you for your whole life. That's just not the way it works. And the other thing is not all lawyers are created equal. And by that, I mean there are certain lawyers that specialize in, in estate planning. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you need to go to someone who, who specializes in estate planning. Or if you're, if you're elder law and you're looking for someone to do Medicaid planning, a good resource is the NALA, the National Academy of Elder Law Attorneys. You can log on www.nala.org and they'll give you a list of attorneys who specialize in elder law, which is estate planning specializing in el for elderly people. For elderly care, which is a whole other topic mm -hmm. of, you know, if your uh, your parent or your grandparent Absolutely. needs to be, you know, go into a home or something, what happens to everything, you need Absolutely. to have that in advance. Like we said, there is so much here, and we are going to have Jeffrey back because we have other things we want to talk about, sure. IRS issues and all of that. <laughs> right. But we wanted you to know that 
strategies available for you, estate planning. Thank you so much. Thanks. Good to be here. Thank you, Jim. We'll be right back.